tiny car crumpled up next to this massive piece of road construction equipment. It had to be at least 10 tons. Our male patient laying on the ground, and I'm worried about how he got there. I'm assessing the driver, and her seat has been pushed so far forward that she's actually lying over top of the steering wheel. Race to 28. We are now responding Delta for a 22-year-old male. He was initially involved in a rollover. While out of the vehicle, he was then struck by another vehicle on the highway. Oh, he stuck him. Yeah, this is bad. It's not completely uncommon for details to evolve as we are driving to the call, but my spidey senses lit up and I felt that this call was going to be very bad. I'm assuming it's right here. Oh, there's lights in the ditch there. Yeah, this looks like it. Let's turn the scene light on and we'll pull up right beside. Or what are we looking for? There's a vehicle that's rolled over on the side of the ditch. That, that semi truck, he was running across the highway and he got the guy got hit. So Where is he? He's in the ditch somewhere. I don't know. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. There aren't words to describe how you feel in that moment. Tell Tom. Tell Tom right now. Well, every second feels like an hour until you find that person. Apparently he's like, he got hit highway speed by a semi. He's in the ditch over here where he needs spotlight. We wanted to get every single person searching for this patient. Stop! We need you guys looking for the patient with your spotlights in the ditch because he was hit highway speeds by a semi on foot. Oh, oh, I can see something right there. I'm taking the ditch. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, let's check this one. Yeah. Get on the stretcher. Get on the radio. Tell him we're seat test one. He's agonal rest. We need to get him on the stretcher now. He's going to code. We're trauma alert to you. Seat test one. He's barely breathing, so move okay. fast. We got to go now. This patient needs to be in a trauma center in order for him to survive. Okay. Okay, both of his legs there. are broken. We need to extremity lift him. Life before limb, we got to move. He's gonna die a lot faster from his heart stopping than his bones being broken, so my primary focus is his heart. Okay, you guys ready? Three, two, one. <sighs> Just stay with us, buddy, okay? Keep breathing, you're doing good. I don't know if he was thrown, I don't know okay, anything on, about him. That's the one that hit him as far as I know. And then as soon as we get in here, just go, and I need a firefighter. Two firefighters. When a person gets hit by uh, such a big vehicle, you're gonna sustain multiple fractures. Your internal organs are gonna be damaged. His fate's almost sealed when the accident happened. There's not a good prognosis. We tried numerous and various attempts to resuscitate him, but his injuries were irreparable. I don't think there was much we could have done for this patient, but you always want to do more. It's a real tragedy. We learned that he was just visiting the province, barely over 20 years old, so he's barely an adult. And now his family has to go their whole lives knowing what it's like to live without him. The problem with a stabbing is that you don't know the depth of the injury. You can see on the surface the length and width, but you don't know how deep it's gone. There could be an arterial bleed, and an arterial bleed is life-threatening, and a person can die within minutes. Do you want to come to the truck? Maybe we'll check you out. Have a seat on the bench there, bro. Bleeding lots? It was. OK, just leave it like that for now. Was it spurting blood, or was yeah. it? At first, it was. We see the police have actually already applied a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. So what happened, bud? Sometimes somebody will have an injury that they can see or feel, but not realize they've been stabbed somewhere else. We call that a distracting injury. Is that it? You weren't stabbed anywhere else, eh? Hopefully on the side somewhere. Maybe on my head. Yeah. They're so focused on the injury that they can see that they don't feel anything else. Can you move your fingers? I can, but, but, but my arm's going real numbly. Yeah, that's yeah because the tourniquet's on. on. We put a tourniquet on above the wound, and we use it to stop the blood flow. I think we're gonna try with the tourniquet off. I don't think it's arterial, and if we need to put the tourniquet back on, we can do that. We're gonna keep it though, just in case. For a, a city police officer to identify a major wound like that, to have a tourniquet on him and essentially treat the patient before we even arrive is fantastic. Maybe I can have that thing back then. Do you wanna toss me that tourniquet? 
Sure. It has blood on it. It was very quick thinking of the officer to apply that tourniquet. Not all police officers carry them. What type of knife did she use? Kitchen knife. He was lucky it could have been a lot worse. The knife is bigger, if it was sharper, it could have died right then and there. I need a finger. I was going to die or something. Yeah, the mean streets of Saskatoon. He did have an arterial bleed, went to the OR for repair of the injury, and admitted to hospital to recover. Going for a man down, unconscious in the elevator. We were just at this building for a stabbing. We go to that apartment building at least maybe one to two times a night. We arrive on scene and we find a male passed out in the elevator in our previous patient's blood. Sir, you want to wake up? City police, are you okay? Wake up! Who called this in? I recognize this. Hey, you've been drinking. Some paramedics, how are you feeling? What's your name, sir? What? Hey, hey, hey. Okay. So we wake the gentleman up and he's not happy to see us. What? Can we take you to some What? Initially, I believe that he thought we were police officers, and a lot of the time, they're not happy to see police. No, no, you're in the hospital, you don't want to jail. People are combative because you're ruining their good time, you're taking them away from their situation, and they just want to be left alone. What if we give you a good place to sleep tonight? There'll be a bed and a blanket and be a sandwich. Monster getting rowdy. Are you going to crawl up onto this bed? I'll start that. You're just going to be calm, me. Sure. One, two, three. That's better. Let's go, bud. Let's go skip the world, too. Some people that aren't really heard in society, they feel like they're kind of pushed aside. I speak for them when they're not able to speak for themselves. What? Just be calm. Just be calm. What? I'm one of the paramedics. I'm not a, I'm not a police officer, OK? Sometimes. They can't do that physically, or they don't have the capacity to do that. So if you stay calm, we'll stay calm, so you can sleep, and in the morning they'll let you go home, okay? I can be that voice for them. I like being that advocate. For me, that's the most rewarding part of the job. When we walk into this room, the firefighters are already treating this patient. She's hunched over, she's struggling to breathe. She just took an Ativan and uh, one milligram got lauded. Okay. I haven't even got her name, she just, she's really struggling here. I have so much and I cannot, I can't breathe. Part of our treatment is to calm this patient down. I want you to stay nice and calm for me. I can't. I know you can't breathe. We have some masks with some oxygen coming. I need coming. air on my face. So. Here, breathe this in. I want you to breathe. There you go. Now we got that medicine, let's breathe. Let's get a 12 week too. <laughs> I'm gonna put gonna... some stickers on you, okay? Take a look at your heart. We're giving this patient a nebulizer, which is a mask with medication that will help her breathe. Just take some big breaths. When was the last time you had some shortness of breath like this? I've been gradually getting kind of bad in the last year or so. In the last Just day? My prednisone, my dilata, and uh, my inhaler. I got everything to the teeth, and it's just my serious deal. PD, I don't know what it is. Judy, right now I want you just to focus on your breathing, okay? Just until we can get this under control. Quit answering me questions, Beth. Oh, no. Sorry. What are you doing, baby? Um, when a patient is anxious, we have to do our best to try and stay calm so we don't escalate the situation. Oh. Judy, just cooperate with us. We're just trying to take a picture of your heart. She's still showing signs of distress. She's still short of breath. Oxygen is 95%. Deep breath. Her oxygen levels are coming up. Judy, deep breath. But there's still no sign of improvement. Do you want, why don't we take this off? No, don't take my oxygen off. There, this is there's oxygen. nothing, yeah, this, this is, is oxygen. oxygen. I don't know how to use that one. This is becoming a difficult situation. There's more in this one. Yeah, it's on no, a higher. You don't She's not calming down. She's not showing any signs of improvement. One, two, three. She needs to be taken to the hospital. Oh. Don't grab onto anything. Oh. COPD is a terrible, progressive disease that really has no cure. These people that have it struggle every single day. Was transported to hospital. She was admitted and remained in hospital for over a month. We roll up on scene to see this tiny car crumpled up next to this massive piece of road construction equipment. It had to be at least 10 tons. Driver's pinned. Okay. All this is hurting. Okay. Uh, Joanna here, everything hurts. Okay. Her legs hurt. Okay. I don't think she's wearing a seatbelt. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> and then her. we got a guy laying down on the side here too. I walk around the car to find our male patient laying on the ground, and I'm worried about how he got there. How did you get out of the car? I just pushed the door open and got out. Okay, is anything hurting right now? My stomach. Can I sneak in here? Yeah. What's your name, ma'am? What's your name? Jamie. How fast were you going when you hit this? 50 or 40. I'm assessing the driver, and her seat has been pushed so far forward that she's actually lying over top of the steering wheel. You weren't going that fast. OK. OK, you got some abrasions on your hip bones here. He's complaining of abdominal pain. Does your hips hurt? I can't see what's going on internally, but he could very well be bleeding from a vital organ. I'm just going to feel up your neck, OK? Any pain here? No. Any pain down here? Let's see if we can get you out of here and over to the ambulance. When a vehicle is traveling at 60 or 70 kilometers an hour, everything in the vehicle is traveling at 60 or 70 kilometers an hour. We need to get this jacket off you. Everything sorry, comes to a minute. full and complete stop, including stuff that's in your body. Okay, we're good. On your call. So when your skull comes to a stop, your brain actually hits off the front of your skull and then back off the back of your skull. We call that a coup contra coup. It can be very dangerous. So she was the driver. They were going about 50 kilometers an hour. I'm just glad that the people were wearing their seatbelts and didn't get thrown from the vehicle. Okay. If you're not wearing your seatbelt, you turn into a flying object inside that car. We're going to St. Paul's. Yeah. and you can hurt other passengers as well as yourself.